Come back to Earth after our long journey through space. And as we look out from our solar system, we can only wonder at what mysteries lie beyond the outer planets. You enjoy that? Yes, Dad, it was really good. Thanks, Mr. Gore. Pip didn't like the dark. She's being stupid again. We all know there's no such person as Pip. Matthew? There is! There is! That's my own very best friend. Now pack it in, both of you. You won't go into the waxworks. Can we go to the Chamber of Horrors? No, it's a bit gruesome. Right. On Colin's birthday, we went to London Dungeon. They've got torches and executions and dripping blandings. <laughs> ah, on Colin's birthday, we didn't have Polly with us. Well, we don't want any nightmares tonight. Oh, please. She doesn't have to go in. You said we could go on a park. Oh, all right, after we've been to the waxworks. Come on, Polly. We'll go to the park. Sorry, darling. You better tell Pip to watch her hat doesn't blow off. She's not wearing a hat. Mathematical genius to be an astronomer, and judging by your last school report. Oh, Dad! I'd rather be a racing driver. Yeah, that would be exciting. the pigeons, boys. It's Trafalgar Square coming up. <laughs> Come on, into bed. School tomorrow. Mm. You cleaned your teeth? You enjoyed your birthday? Yes, lots. And thank you for my presents. Off to sleep now. Mum? Yes. How do you know this is my real birthday? How do you mean? Well, you weren't there, were you? Not like with Polly. So how can you be sure when I was born? It was on the form we got from the hospital when we adopted you. OK. Yeah. Can I read for a few minutes? Not tonight. It's getting late and you need your sleep. 
Oh, I'm not a baby anymore. I'll be a teenager next birthday. Sleep. Good night. Mm. Night. Sleep time. Both settled? Yes. Matthew says thank you for his birthday. And that's nice. He was talking about being adopted. Oh? Wanted to know how we knew when his real birthday was. He's not worrying, is he? Oh, good heavens, no. Far from it. It doesn't seem like 12 years ago, does it? No. Remember how little he was when we collected him from the hospital? I was terrified of touching him in case he broke. And look at him now. He was a lovely baby. Not like Polly, always yelling her head off until she got what she wanted. Yes, but Matthew never had any competition for your attention, did he? I was always very careful not to spoil him. Yes, of course you were. Oh, I don't think we've done too badly, have we? When you look at the problems some people have with their kids... Mommy! Mommy! When will you learn to keep your big mouth shut? What's the betting it's Piff wanting another drink of water? Oh, about ten to one on, I'd say. Isn't there any way we can get rid of it? Oh, don't worry. Lots of little girls have imaginary friends at her age. I used to have one myself. Mommy! Sure. Right. Everyone got those? Now, who can tell me the factors for 12? Jane. Two and six. Two and six, right? Anything else? Colin. Uh, two. That is three and four. Three and four. And Matthew. Sir? Now we've got the factors two and six because two sixes are twelve and three and four. What else makes twelve? Twelve and one. Twelve and one. Good. Never forget that insignificant little digit, eh, Matthew? Right, everyone, now I want you to write down the factors for all these other numbers, starting now. Yes? What is it? Sorry, sir. I thought somebody said something. What is it? Get on with your work, Matthew. I finished, sir. <laughs> you what? Finished, sir. Bring your book up here.
You can go back to your seat. men and women. How do you mean, darling? Well, why do we have two sexes? Why are they so different? That's a difficult one. But I suppose they're different because men and women have different functions in life. It's all to do with hormones and things. But why do we need two? Well, you have to have male and female to make babies. Yes, I know that. But what I want to know is why. Why do we have to have two to make one? It doesn't seem very, very efficient, does it? I don't know. I've never thought about it like that. It's just the way things are arranged. Yes, but how did they get arranged like that? Why? I've no idea. What a strange question. Look, perhaps you and I could talk about this another time, eh? OK. Can I go around to Collins for a while? He's got a new video game he wants to show me. All right. But do your homework first. What? No, I can't. I asked my mother. She doesn't know either. Hello. Who are you talking to? Nobody. Oh. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just the way things are. Well, the time the world takes to turn round is a day, and that's 24 hours, and... I don't know why, and I don't see why 32 hours would be more sensible. Anyway, 24 hours do make a day, everybody knows that, and seven days make a week. Well, who wants a week to divide into halves and quarters? What would be the point of it? A week just is seven days, and four weeks makes a month. Only usually it's 30 days, or 31 days. No, it's never 32 days. You've got a thing about 32. Yes, I can see that. But we don't want a week that lasts eight days. Besides, the world goes round the sun in 365 and a bit days, and you can't turn that into proper halves and quarters. Well, there are 12 of these months in a year, so... Oh, it's not just stupid. It's like that, because no kind of the same size months would fit into a year properly, even if... Hi, Matthew! Hi! Fixed it? Yes. Main problem was dirt in the carburetor. Like some coffee? Yeah, but don't you bother, I'll make it. Matthew's gone over to Colin's house. You haven't noticed anything odd? Well, not exactly odd. Uh, unusual about Matthew lately. Oh, so you've noticed, have you? Was he listening to nothing or talking to himself? Yes, talking. Well, both, really. Has he been doing it for long? A couple of days. I expect it's just a craze. It'll probably wear off soon. You worried about him? No. If I'm worried about anybody, it's us. Us? I'm terrified we might have another piff on our hands. Oh, no, not another piff. Anything but that. Oh, I don't think it's very likely. Twelve-year-old boys don't go in for that sort of thing. I'm glad you think so. He's probably practising for the debating society or something. Mind you, what I just heard was hardly standard school debating society stuff. What was he talking about? He seemed to be carrying on some sort of argument as to why there should be seven days in a week rather than eight, and why there are never 32 days in a month. Yes, he does seem to have changed quite suddenly this last week or so. How? Well, I don't know. Well, well, the questions he asks for one thing, like, why do we need to have two sexes, and where exactly is Earth? Well, he probably thought about that after going to the planetarium. Well, perhaps. Only there were others, too, and somehow... 
Well, they're not his sort of questions. Oh, I'm sure it's just a phase he's going through. No, it's a sudden change. It's as if he's switched to another track altogether. Well, I don't think you should make too much of it, darling. There's bound to be a perfectly simple explanation. Something they're doing at school, perhaps. Yes. I expect so. I don't know. I give up. Why does a cow stop? No, it's not a riddle. It's a question. Why? Why does a cow stop what? Well, it gets a bit of the way, and then it doesn't seem to be able to get any further. Not ever. I'm still not with you, I'm afraid. Where does it get a bit of the way? What I mean is, when the cowman opens the gates, the cows will know it's milking time. They all troop off to the milking shed without being told. Yes. And when they get there, they go into their own stalls and wait to be milked. I've seen them. When it's over, they go back into the field again. They understand about that. You see? That's right. But they don't go any further. They just stop there. Oh, you mean they stop understanding? Yes. They don't want to stay in this field. So if they find a hole in the fence, they get out. If they want to get out, when they just open the gates for themselves. They could do quite easily, couldn't they? <laughs> I don't know. Well, they don't know how to, I suppose. Yes, but why? Why don't they? They must have seen the cowman do it hundreds of times. They've got enough brains to remember which door to go into every time. Then surely they can remember how the gate opens. What did you say to him? I just tried to explain about limited intelligence. And did he accept that? <laughs> Not entirely. But you do see what I mean about him asking different sorts of questions these days. I do. We spend the rest of the walk discussing the subject. Here, I can't do this. Do you want to have a go at this new video game? I'm no good at video games. That's only because you don't work at it. The secret of any game is practice. You just don't live one if you like. But how do you practice the video games? It's all to do with your reflexes, man. You gotta get them sharp and your fingers. You could do exercises to get your fingers fit. Like sending them out jogging. <laughs> Announcing the great new sport, finger jogging. Ta-ra! Ta-ra! Enter now for the great finger marathon. No tracksuit required. Hey, you did it. Yes. That was great, Matt. We should have had a watch in you. That was fantastic. Yes. No. What's up? Nothing. Nothing's up. I'll get this game set up. It'd be funny if we suddenly found ourselves with a boy genius on our hands, wouldn't it? You don't suddenly discover boy geniuses. They're born that way. I suppose there could be something latent waiting to be triggered off. I sincerely hope not. You don't fancy having an own stone in the family? No, I don't. Wouldn't you like him to be something special? Well, he is something special. To me. Yes, of course he is. Here we are. They should have all the new models here. who can hear somebody talking, kind of inside himself. Talking? How do you mean? Like inside your head? No. I don't know anybody. Do you? No. I was just wondering. Hearing voices is a well-known first sign of madness. Is it? Yes. People who hear voices get locked away in lunatic asylums. Oh, you better look at the instructions. Just there. What have you done to that spoon? I must have bent it. Don't know my own strength. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you all right, Matt? No, I don't feel very well. 
How is he? Not at all well. His temperature is 102. You sure it's nothing serious? Well, the doctor says not. He's obviously picked it up at school. He's so restless. He seems to have something on his mind that's bothering him. No, no, I can't. I'll go. All right, I'll get some orange juice. That might help. Oh. No. No, Chalky. Understand. I want to go to sleep. Oh, Jockey. Do shut up and go away. Hello, Matthew. What's up? Dad. Oh, Dad, I'm so tired. Please, will you tell Chocky to go away? He doesn't understand. Here, drink this. I've put lots of ice in it. He's really burning up. There. Now try to sleep. I want to go to sleep, Mummy, but Chucky doesn't understand. Please make him shh, shut shh, up. Shh, 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 shh. He'll feel much better when you wake up in the morning. No, Mummy, Chucky won't listen. Please make him go away now. Chucky? Chucky? Now, you really must be quiet and let Matthew rest. He's not at all well, Chucky, and he must get some sleep, so please, go away. You can come back tomorrow. He'll probably be better then. You see, Chucky, you really do have to clear out so I can get better. Yes. Bye. another peep out of you until you wake up in the morning. Well, what do you make of that? I don't know. But perhaps this Chucky is who he's been talking to. Yes, he does seem convinced there's somebody there. Who or what on earth is Chucky? his temperature was down this morning. Yes. Well, physically, he's okay. Oh, Chucky's still staying, is he? I don't think it's funny. He 
thanked me. Oh? For telling Chucky to go away last night. Did he now? Said she wouldn't listen to him. I think it's very odd. I really don't know what to make of it. Oh. I've never heard of a 12-year-old inventor a character like this. Well, he doesn't seem to think that it is invented. What does he think it is, then? Well, I'm not sure, really. He treats it all as though it's absolutely real, and yet... Well, he doesn't seem to be able to make up his mind whether or not it's a he or a she. Now, that is odd. Oh, I don't suppose it'll do him any harm to let him have his bit of fantasy. Yes, but what do we do? Oh, why don't we just give it a bit of time, play along with it for a bit and see how it goes? Well, that doesn't sound very right to me. No? If we go around pretending to believe in things that aren't really there, how on earth is a child supposed to distinguish what's real? Depends on how many people believe it. Isn't that what most of the world's religions are about? You're no help at all. Anyway, I better go and say hello to him. Otherwise, you'll start thinking there is something wrong. Oh, take Polly's toys up with you. Hi. Hello, Dad. Feeling better? Yes, thanks. What's you been doing with yourself all day? Not much. Tried to do a bit of drawing. I couldn't get it right. I think Leonardo can rest easy. Good. Colin came round, but Mummy said she didn't think he ought to come up. In case I was catching. Quite right. And Chucky hasn't come back yet. Chucky, yes. This isn't another Piff, is it? No! No, Dad! Everybody knows Piff's just suddenly Polly's invented. Chucky's real. But invisible. Yes. She's more a sort of... Well, a sort of presence, I suppose you'd say. Ah. Dad, you don't think I'm going mad, do you? Yeah, bonkers. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, Colin says hearing voices is a well-known first sign of madness. And is that what Chucky's like, a, a voice that you hear? Yes. Telling you to do things? No. More asking questions. She wants to know about us. The way we live and think. Everything about our world. Really, because it's so different from her own. Her own world? You mean she's from somewhere else? Yes. I can't understand exactly where, but I know it's a long, long way away. I see. So all these strange questions you've been asking lately... Now for Jockey, that's right. Well, at least we've got that sorted out. I'll tell you something that is bothering me, though. What? You don't seem very sure whether Chucky's a he or a she. No. Chucky doesn't know either. Oh. Isn't that a bit uh, unusual? Well, yes. I thought so. But she just doesn't know about that sort of thing. I had to explain all the differences between men and women. Team then she couldn't seem to grasp it. He, she sounds a bit thick. Oh, no. She's fantastically brilliant. She just didn't know about male and female. <laughs> she thought it was a pretty stupid arrangement. Did she indeed? Yeah. Hmm. Finds a lot of things stupid. It gets a bit boring sometimes listening to him. What sort of things? Well, animals, for instance. He thinks animals are hilarious. Why? She said dim. Told him that's not their fault. That's where they're made. Quite right. He's got... Listen, we'd better decide on one or the other. He or she. Yeah. Chucky does talk rather like a boy. But a lot of the time it's not about the sort of things boys talk about. Sometimes it's the way older girls talk. A bit bossy. You know. Yeah, so? Altogether, when I really think about it, Chucky seems more female than male. So I think I'll call her she. Good. Well, at least that's something. Yeah. I wonder if we ought to get some help. Why? It doesn't seem to be doing him any harm. Well, I don't want to find that we've been helping to stabilise a fantasy that we ought to have been trying to dispel. Oh, I'm sure we're not. And at least we've made one advance. Oh? We've agreed to regard Chucky as a she. Really? You're getting as bad as Matthew. Oh, come on, we haven't got round to the really big question yet. What's that? 
If Chucky is real, why has you chosen Matthew? was terrible. We'll go through it all again, right? And pay attention. What are these? Roger. Male and female gametes, Miss Gray. Good. At least we've got that settled. Now, why is the female gamete always larger than the male? Jane. Because it stores the food for the zygote to live on. Yes, good. Now, why does the male gamete always have a tail? Matthew. So it can swim to the female and fuse with it. Yes, right. Now then, who can tell me what happens next? Please, miss. Yes, Matthew. How do people who only have one sex manage to reproduce? Well, we all only have one sex. What do you mean? No. What I meant was one kind of person. All alike. Not different like men and women. <laughs> You mean asexual reproduction. You should know that, Matthew. We've already done asexual reproduction. It only occurs in plants, not in animals. And certainly not in people. Sometimes it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nonsense, Matthew, and you know it is, don't you? No, Miss Blade. What do you mean, no? It isn't nonsense, Miss Blade, because I know somebody like that. What do you mean? Nothing, Miss Blade. Nothing. Well, you must have meant something. No. Sorry. All right. Some eggs are bigger than others. A hen's egg, for example, is many times larger than a human egg. Now, who can tell me why this is? Susan. Because the human embryo will get its food from the mother and not from the egg. But the hen embryo develops outside the mother, so it has to get its food from the egg. Yes. Good. Well, you all seem to know it today, so what happened to your homework? You all came out. Now, I'd like you all to turn to page 107. Darling, very smart. Yeah. Can I see the engine? Can you open the bonnet, Dad? Yes, is that knob down there? I'll do it. Give it a good pull. That's it. <laughs> oh, I bet it's fast. How fast did it go, Dad? Oh, about 100 miles an hour, I should think. There. How's that for a bonnet pull? Oh, can we go for a drive? After dinner, darling. Can I go and get Colin to show him? Later, later, when we've eaten. <laughs> now, don't touch anything. I'll be back in a minute. What? Pardon? It'd be good for when we 
go on holiday. All that room in the back. Oh, uh, Alan and Phil are coming around later on. Let's talk over the final details. Who's going to take what and so on. Good. Well, there's no sense in duplicating things. Daddy, what's wrong with Matthew? Come inside. No. It's all right, darling. Come on. No way. No way. No. No. It's all right. Come on. Come sit down. Come on. Better now? Yes. Yes. What on earth was wrong? It was the car. The car? Not the car exactly. I think it's Brill. So? I thought Chucky would be interested. Chucky? So I started to tell her how it works and everything. And wasn't she interested? She said it was silly and ugly and clumsy. She laughed no. at it. Who thinks it's fair? Yes, dear, shush. I think Matthew's chalky is stupid and silly. She's in stupid no. chalky. You know, I'm no. thinking. Stop, yes, stop it, Matthew, stop, stop it. Yeah, Both of you. Come with me into the kitchen. Come on and help me get the supper. She's only jealous. Yes, I expect she is. What did Chucky actually say about the car? What did you find so funny? Almost everything. She said the engine's old fashioned and funny. Just mentioned these gears is ridiculous anyway. The car that doesn't use this engine to stop itself as well as make itself go is stupid. I dare say she has a point. In theory, at least. Was that all? Oh, no. She thinks it's terribly funny to have a car that needs springs. And wheels that have to have inflated sausages fastened round them. She says we seem to be stuck in the age of the wheel. Oh dear. She has been having a go at us, hasn't she? I told her that's how cars are. And ours is the very latest thing. And she laughed. And said nobody with any brains would make anything so dangerous or so clumsy. And nobody with any sense would ride in it. And I got mad! He started shouting at her, I suppose. Hmm. Did she say what cars should be like? She says where she comes from. Cars don't have wheels at all. They go along above the ground. They don't need any roads or make any noise. They're made so they can't crash into one another. Sounds good, if you could manage it. Of course, we have got the hovercraft. I know. I told her. She says that's old-fashioned, too. I'll get it. She seems to find a good many things stupid or silly or plain old-fashioned. Yeah. Silly yeah. everything, really. Hmm. No answer to that, is there? <laughs> no. Tell me, have you found out where Chucky comes from yet? Yeah. No. The trouble is, if you don't know where anything else is, how can you find out where you are? Who's on the phone? Mr. Trimble. Oh. What have you been up to now? He wants to see us tomorrow evening. Yes, it's out of books to carry. Thank you. I'm uh, sorry to drag you over here, but I've got an evening class in half an hour, and this seemed the most convenient way of doing it. Oh, that's right. Now, let's get some seats. Oh, thank you. Thank you. These are uh, chairs to your back. Not so yeah. much as the smell of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's the problem? Well, I'm not sure it's right to describe it as a, a problem exactly. It's just there's been 
a remarkable change in Matthew's approach to school over the past few weeks. I'd noticed it myself. I'd taken for maths, as you know, but I thought he'd just been reading something or... Well, I don't know. And then his other subject teacher started to talk to me about him, and it seems that this change goes right across the board. What change is that, Mr. Trimble? Well, I can't speak for his other subjects, of course, but in maths, he's obviously getting some stimulus. And I wondered if he'd been getting private coaching or anything like that. No. Well, we didn't think there was any need. <laughs> Thank you. Perhaps one of you is a mathematician. I'm certainly not. Oh, but no, 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 no. I'm just an accountant, a simple arithmetic. Yes, oh. it's a bit strange. I wonder where he can be getting it from. It's not, um... In the family, something hereditary? No. Uh, not as far as we know. Oh. Someone's been giving him ideas. But I wonder, Mr. Trimble, if... Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for it in a general way. Anything that gets them going is welcome, but... When a child is trying to cope with two different systems, it can confuse him rather than help him. Uh, I'm still not sure I understand uh, exactly what it is you're saying, Mr. Trimble. You mean he's trying to get ahead too fast, no. uh, missing out some of the steps? It's more like trying to think in two languages at the same time. Two different languages? Mm. Well, how do you mean, Mr. Trimble? Well, now, at first I wasn't quite sure what it got out of gear for the boy. Then I got hold of his rough work book and that gave me a line on it. <laughs> well, let me show you what I mean. Now, what do you reckon that means? 179. How do you get that? Well, starting at the right, each one is double the one before it. That adds up to 179. See, 100 would be like this. That's four, and 32, and 64, which is 100, right? Yes, it's what's called the binary code. Is it? I didn't know. It's the way Chalky counts. I was afraid Chalky might have something to do with this, but don't you think it's rather long-winded? Chalky thinks it's silly just because you happen to have ten fingers to have to bother with ten different figures. And all you really need is two. I see. Yet another of the things she finds silly. You mean when she counts, she just uses Y's and N's? Sort of. I just call them Y and N for yes and no, because it's easier. Yeah, it's the way computers come, but where did you come across it? Mr Trimble says you haven't done it at school. I told you, Dad. It's the way Chucky always uses. I really can't take much more of this. He's beginning to drive me round the bend. You're not suggesting Matthew. No. I don't know. It's no good just telling him to pack it in. Well, He'll then simply what are we supposed clam up, to do? shut it away inside well, we himself. We need professional really... help. I know, but what sort of professional help? Well, I don't know. I'm not an expert in these things. I mean, the really odd thing about it is the way Chucky comes up with things Matthew couldn't possibly know or even think of for himself. Take the business with the car. You don't seriously think he wanted to say it was clumsy and old-fashioned, do you? Well, there has to be a logical explanation. Yes. Yes, that's right. No. They use it for putting satellites into orbit. Chocky, I can't understand you. All right. thing will be to ask Dr. Acott to recommend a consultant. Oh, I don't think this is really in a GP's line. And I can just imagine his reactions, assuming Matthew could be persuaded to tell him anything, which is doubtful. If 
only we knew something about Matthew's background. And there might be a history of this sort of thing in the family. What sort of thing? Well, mental disturbances. What are you suggesting? Darling, you've got to accept it. He's a foundling. We adopted him. We're the only family he's ever had. There's no way we can find out where he came from. Knock out all the enemy ships before they get you. No, it's only a game. Yeah. <laughs> you see? Hello. Oh, 86. I'll never do it at top level. <laughs> Here, you have a go. Oh, I don't know. You're not chicken, are you? No, of course not. What level? A top. Here we go. Into action. Darling, are you taking your dollies then? Yes, I'm taking the mandarin for me and Lucy Lockett for Pip. Oh dear. Have you been to the loo? Yes, Mummy. Good girl. Then go and get my car. All set then? Yes, I think that's everything. Oh, you can take those. Where's Matthew? He's already in the car, studying the route map. No mention of you know who. No, she doesn't seem to be around this morning. Good. Well, let's hope it stays that way. Come on, then let's get going before the traffic builds up. Have you decided which way we're going to go? I think so, yes. Matthew. He's gone off to do a bit of exploring. Well, by the river? What if he should fall He'll in? be all right. I told him to be careful. Oh, yes, but it's very it's deep. It's good for him to start being a bit independent. Is this a car, Matthew? No, that's a boat too. It is different to the ice. How does it work? It just floats on the water. Mind. 
Don't you, you little blighter? Now, what the devil are you up to, eh? You. Oh, is that the time? Hmm. Matthew's been gone nearly an hour. I hope he's all right. Well, it's getting a bit blowy anyway. You start clearing up. I'll go and have a look for him. All right. It's not good enough, officer. I've been burgled three times in the last two years. I want something done about it. I don't think this young man was going to do How anything. How the devil do you know what he was going to do? They start very young these days, you know. What's going on? Dad! I managed to calm him down a bit in the end, but it took a bit of doing, I can tell you. He was furious. I'm sorry. I wasn't doing anything. But you were on his boat. Yes, I just didn't think. Then it's high time you did think. We've been worried sick about you. I'm sorry, Mummy. Going off on your own like that. We had no idea where you were or what had happened to you. Honestly, I didn't Don't mean Don't you anything. ever do anything like that again. Do you hear me? The chap's had a lot of trouble with thieves and vandals. Thought he managed to catch one of them at last. What were you doing trespassing on somebody's boat? Why? I was just looking. Chucky's never seen a boat before. Me. Chucky? I might have known. I only thought she'd be interested. It wasn't her fault. I don't want to hear any more. That's quite enough. We're going home. Polly! They're both settled. Good. Have you finished in there? Yes. Good. Let's go and sit down, shall we? We can't go on like this. No, I know. It's gone too far. This... Well, whatever it is, it's... It's getting him into trouble now, and I can't stand much more of it. No. I've been thinking, there's... a chap I was at Cambridge with, Roy Landis. Yes? He was a medic. <clears throat> we were quite good friends. What about him? Well, after he qualified, I believe he went into psychiatry. Uh, last thing I'd heard of him, he'd been made a consultant at the Claunsley. I could call him and ask his advice. Informally. Yes. Yes, please ring him. Last over. We only need six. Three wickets in hand. We should do it. Yes, sir. You go. Let's take it steady. I suppose you'd better get padded up. Yes, sir.
He's on a hat trick. So, young Matthew, it's all up to you. Last man in and six to make. Play up, play up, and play the game, eh? Sorry, sir? It's poetry, lad. Famous poem. Just do your best, eh? See if you can survive the last four balls and force a draw. That's all you can do. Yes, sir. Six needed. Matthew Gore facing the bowling. Might as well go home now. Lock them, lad. Just lock them. Mine! Lock, boy, lock! There's only two more balls to go! You had a bit of excitement in the cricket match this afternoon. Yes. Well, it was chalky, really. I suppose you could say it was cheating. I didn't plan it. it just happened. Chalky sort of took over. And winning six? Yes, off the last ball but one. Fantastic. You must be the hero of the school. Yeah. It's a bit awkward, really. Because I couldn't tell anybody what really happened. And everybody knows I'm not much of a batsman. I had to take all the credit. Still... Chucky doesn't seem to mind. Well, that's all right, then. Speaking of Chucky, I was talking to an old friend of mine from Cambridge this afternoon. He seems to have the same sort of ideas about cars that Chucky has. Really? Yeah. I thought you might like to meet him. Did you tell him about Chucky? Well, yes, he was very interested. About Chucky? Yeah, I rather got the impression he may have run across somebody a bit like her before. I thought you might like to meet him. It would be nice for you to have someone to talk to who knows about that sort of thing. Yeah, I might like that. Anyway, as I said, he's an old friend. I haven't seen him for years, so I've asked him to lunch on Sunday. OK? Yeah, OK. His name's Roy Landis. I think you'll like him. <laughs> Did you remember those Sunday lunch times we used to spend at Grantchester? Oh, yes. <laughs> Marvellous roast they used to do. Yeah. I expect it's all carveries now. Or organic salads, oh. bean sprouts and brown rice. Not very Rupert Brooke, I'd say. No. Were you at Cambridge, Mary? No. A Girton girl, perhaps? No, 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 no. I read history at London. Oh, which college? Bedford. Oh, very nice. Amongst all the roses in Regent's Park. Mm. <laughs> what are your ambitions, Matthew? Do you fancy following your father or mother? I don't know yet. I always shout for Cambridge in the boat race. Oh. Well, the least said about that, the better. <laughs> yes. I don't really know what I want to do yet. Not quite right. Keep your options open. I don't suppose you know what you're really good at yet, do you? I'm not very good at anything, I'm afraid. Oh, don't worry. You've got plenty of time yet. Well, I think I'll start clearing this lot away. I'll give you a hand. No, no, no. You're a guest, Roy. You uh, go out in the garden and relax. Matthew will keep you company. I know you've got things to talk about. Thanks. All right, Matthew? Yes. Come on, Miss Lance. I'll show you my favourite tree. Right. What do you think? They seem to be getting on rather well. I see. So you can't tell where she comes from? No. We haven't been able to work it out. Hmm. Well, I can quite understand that. But what about her home life? Well, she tries to tell me, but I can't make out what it's like. Why is that? A lot of the things she says just don't mean anything to me. It's like... It's a 
suppose I was quite deaf. Yes. And you tried to tell me about a tune. I wouldn't be able to know what you were talking about, would I? <laughs> no. That's a very good analogy. I like that. Sometimes she talks about her father and her mother. But the hymns and hers get mixed up. As if they were both the same. We have the same problem with Chalky to start with. I see. That must be very confusing. Oh, it is. Tarway is difficult for her too. She says it's natural and easy to love one person. But if your parent is divided into two different people, it must be pretty difficult not to love one more than the other. Do you agree with her? Oh, no. I have to keep trying to tell Chucky that we love our fathers and mothers differently, because they're different people. And that doesn't mean we love one more than the other. I must say, Roy isn't quite what I expected. Oh? What did you expect? I'm not sure, really. I suppose psychiatrists are different from surgeons and things. Less traditional. He's very highly thought of, I understand. Oh, yes, I'm sure he is. Oh, I do hope we're doing the right thing. Roy knows what he's about. He won't do anything to hurt Matthew. I hope you're right. Will you stop worrying? Come on, let's get these things washed up. And we can sit down with the papers. Yes, that's what Chalky thinks too. Is it now? Yes. She says our civilization is suffering from primitive fixation on the wheel. What exactly does she mean by that? Well, she says once we discovered rotary motion, we started to apply it to everything. And we're only just starting to show signs breaking free from our wheel obsession. Well, that's a fascinating idea. I thought so. Well, and absolutely true, when you really consider it. Yes. Yes, darling. When are we going to have our tea? Pip and I are ever so hungry and thirsty. You've only just finished clearing away the lunch things. Matthew's been talking to Dr. Linus for hours, hasn't he? Yes, he has. What are they talking about? Oh, all sorts of things, I expect. Grown-up things. Boring. She says space rockets are too primitive. Like driving a car with clockwork or even petrol. Once you've used up your store power, you're finished. What should we use as fuel then? Well, I can't really understand everything she tells me, because a lot of it won't turn into proper words. But I know it's something to do with space radiations that you can pick up and convert, if you know how. Use them to work your motor or your gravity screens. Gravity screens? Yes. Chucky says weight is a sort of force, and the force is a form of energy. And you have to make that work for you, not against you. And then you could reach higher speeds than you ever could with old-fashioned rockets. Have you any idea how fast? Yes. She says the limit at the moment is the speed of light. At the moment? Hmm. She says that's the main obstacle to efficient space travel. The speed of light is too slow because of the huge distances. Yes. Yes, I can appreciate that. Chucky says somehow they've got to find a way around that. She tried to tell me about the most promising theories, but I lost her again. She kept going on. This wouldn't turn into proper words. Still, I'm going to stick at it, and I might be able to understand her eventually. She says she'll help me. You seem to have managed to understand an awful lot already. Do you really think so? I do indeed. I certainly do. Oh, both in bed? Yes. Matthew's worn out after talking so much. I'm sorry. Matthew said you'd read for a little while. Come and sit down then. 
Would you like a drink? No, thank you. Well. <clears throat> you and Matthew certainly had a long session this afternoon. Yes. I, uh, I hope you didn't find it too tedious. Tedious? Good Lord, no. You didn't tell me the half of it. What do you think? What, what's causing it? Well, if you were consulting me professionally, I'd stall. I'd say it was a complex case needing more than a short examination can reveal. But between friends? I'm going to be unprofessional and confess that it's got me beat. Oh. I, I know what it looks like. But that's sheer nonsense. What is? Our ancestors would have said that Chalky is a wandering, if not wanton, spirit, which has invaded Matthew. They'd have said that this was a plain case of possession. Possession? I, I said that's what our ancestors would have thought. But I'm not sure possession is the right word. It does imply domination. And this seems more like a working arrangement. What do you mean? Well, when Matthew was ill, he asked you to send Chocky away and she went. Since then, they seem to have agreed that she should only visit at times that suit him. Him, you notice, not her. But surely that proves that it's something inside Matthew if, if he can control it. No, no, not at all. Matthew says he had a lot of trouble at first because Chocky's time isn't the same to demonstrate the duration of an hour. So now she knows how to avoid awkward times like meals or when he's doing his homework or even in the middle of the night. Apparently, she used to wake him up at first with strings of impossible questions. He didn't like that. No, he wouldn't. Wait a moment. Now you're talking as if this Chocky really exists. It's read somewhere, or, or heard, or seen on television. Oh, that's a nice, comfortable theory, Mary, but it just doesn't fit the evidence. You've got to get used to the fact that Chocky is not a figment of Matthew's imagination. No, I don't believe that. It's not possible. Where she comes from, or what she is, beats me completely at the moment, and it beats Matthew too. But Chocky is real. She exists. Chucky, this is awfully boring. No, Matthew. It is most interesting. Oh, it's not. Really, Chucky. I wish there was some way I could see you. No. You would be afraid. I wouldn't be afraid. Really, I wouldn't. Yes. We are very different. Well, couldn't you just... anything? Just for me. Nobody else. Please. All right. Concentrate. And I will show you my energy field.
Oh, hi, Mum. Hello, darling. Hey, you're not leaving those there. No, of course not. No, of course not about it. Upstairs. Can I have a drink first? Help yourself. Haven't you got anything for me? Oh, yes, my report. Thank you. Have you seen it? Can I go around to Collins for a while? Yes, of course. We've got to check their rubber dinghy to make sure it's got no leaks. Isn't it marvellous? No more school for six whole weeks. Fantastic. I'll be back for supper. Yes, OK. Mummy? Hmm? Matthew's left his things on the floor. Oh, Matthew! Do you call them good? I think so, but you know more about art than I do. What do you think? Well, there's life and movement in them. There's perception. And there's a feeling of confidence, but... Well, they're odd. I found them by accident in his room. He'd hidden them behind the wardrobe. Perhaps one of the children in his class, or his art teacher. No, I've seen some of her stuff. Her style's a bit on the niggly side. Besides, this one is her. It's not very flattering, either. Heavens, does she really look like that? You know, they begin to grow on you, don't they, when you get used to them? They're really not bad. No, you see, look. Now, this one's the view from his bedroom window. Yes, I see. Well, you could just put them back and say nothing. No, they'd go on worrying me. I'd rather he told us about them. You may not like what he says. I haven't liked any of this business, even before your psychiatrist friends started talking about possession. But I'd still rather know than be left guessing. Matthew, could you come down for a minute? Matthew? Mommy! Hi, Dad. Oh. Mummy found these in your room. And they were behind your cupboard. Oh, that's where they went. They're rather good. Are they yours? Yes. I meant, did you do them? Yes. They're not like your usual style, are they? I'd have thought you'd get higher marks for art if you could paint and draw like this. They're not art. They're private. Oh. You seem to be seeing things in a different way. I expect it's something to do with growing up. We're only interested to know who really did them, Matthew. I did. I mean, sort of. Well, I did do them! Oh, shush! Oh, sh it doesn't really matter, darling. Do things really look like that to you? No. That's how Chucky sees things. Do you want to tell us about it? It all started one day after art. I'm not much good at art, you know. Miss Soames said what I'd done was hopeless, and Chucky thought so too. Chucky said it was because I wasn't looking at things properly. So I said I didn't see where properly came into it. You either see things or you don't. Go on. Well, she said you can look at something without seeing it if you don't look properly. Let me argue, because it didn't seem to make sense. Oh, you argue with Chucky, do you? Sometimes. Who won this one? Well, nobody, really. Chucky said what about trying the experiment? Me doing the drawing and her doing the seeing. Didn't see how that could work. But she said it was worth trying, so we did. And it worked? Well, it didn't come off the first few times, because I couldn't seem to think of nothing. But that's what Chucky said. Just sit and hold a pencil and think of nothing. 
Anyway, about the fourth time we tried, I half managed for a minute or two. And after that, it got better. When we practiced a bit more, it got quite easy. Now I've only got to sort of sit down with the paints to switch off me. And the picture comes. Only the way it comes is the way Chalky sees, not the way I do. You mean you just sort of hand over to Chalky? Mm. Well, doesn't that feel a bit funny to you? It did the first time or two. A bit like... A bit like no brakes. But after that, it got more like... More like riding a bicycle with no hands. Only not quite. Because Chalky was doing the steering, not me. It's hard to explain. Does it ever happen when you don't want it to? By accident? Oh, no, it couldn't. I have to make it happen by thinking of nothing. I can watch my hands now, though. So all the veal paint you're drawing is mine. It's just the seeing what to do, this isn't. Well, darling, do you think that's a good thing to do? Well, I think so. Yes. Look, they're much better pictures than I do on my own. Even if they do look a bit funny. Well, that's not exactly what I... <laughs> look, never mind. It's getting late. It doesn't matter. No school tomorrow. No, lucky old you, eh? Listen... Have you shown these to anyone else? Well, not really shown. I mean, I haven't been doing it in art. Ah, that's why your marks are still so low. Mm. But Miss Soames came into the room when I just finished that one. And she saw it? Yes. She asked whose it was, which was a bit awkward, because I couldn't pretend it was anyone else's. So I had to tell her it was mine. <laughs> I bet that gave her a bit of a surprise. She thought I was telling lies. She went, all right, let's see you do a racing car at speed. And did you? No. I had to tell her I can only do things that I can see. So she said, all right, what about the view from the other window then? So I turned the easel around and I did it. <laughs> and she stared at it very hard. Then looked at me very queerly. Then asked in her mind if she kept it. Oh, dear. It's funny she didn't say anything about it in your report. Well, it was a couple of days ago, after reports had gone in. Oh, I see. Not like some of your other teachers, eh? Seem to have flummoxed some of them. Oh, yes. Well, never mind. We'll talk about your report another time. You trundle off to bed now. Thanks for... Oh, David. Oh, he was such a lovely little boy, and now this. He still is, darling. He's still exactly the same. Plus, something he chooses to call Chucky, that's all. I'm afraid for him. I mean, it's, it's getting more and more real to him. I'm afraid that it might hurt him. He's beginning to let it take control. No, no, Matthew's quite emphatic that he's in control. He decides if and when it can happen. And there's no reason to suppose it's doing him any harm at all. Well, perhaps. Not yet. Chucky. I think Mummy's worried again. She does not understand. I know. People don't. Only my father, perhaps. And Dr. Landis. Yes. Dr. Landis understands. Your father tries to. Chucky, I've been thinking. Yes, Matthew. We're going away next week on holiday. What? is holiday. Every year we stop work for two weeks and go away somewhere. This year we're going to live in a cottage. A little house by the river. With Colin and Emma and their mum and dad. You are leaving your comfortable big houses to go and live all together in a small house? <laughs> Chocky. That is silly. Very silly. No, it isn't. We like it. It's good. Silly. Stop it, I don't want you there. I want you to stay away. Stay away. Yes, I don't want you there. The others wouldn't understand. I want you to go away. Chucky? Chucky? Chucky, where are you? Hmm? Oh, Polly. I'm sorry. Will you please leave things alone? Don't you want me to Oh, help? for goodness sake, Polly. Hello, I'm back. Daddy! Hello, my girl. 
You all packed and ready? Yes. Where's Mummy in here? Hey, what are you doing? What does it look like? <laughs> yes, what? Oh, nothing. Shouldn't Matthew be doing that himself? Yes, well, Matthew's idea of packing isn't the same as mine. Besides, I'm the one who's had to iron everything. Yes, of course. Where is he? He could be helping you, at least. I sent him over to Colin's house. I couldn't bear to see him moping about. Oh? And so everyone keeps telling me. What's that supposed to mean? Just that I'm getting a bit tired of being humoured, that's all. Humoured? By your friend Roy Landis and by... And who? Who else have you talked to about it? Why don't you go and play in the garden for a little while? Hmm? Go on, darling, off you go. I went to see Dr. Acott today. Oh? About Matthew? Yes. I thought we agreed it wasn't up Acott Street. Yes, but I had to do something. Well, Matthew's been in a daze these last few days. This morning I, I could hardly get a word out of him, so I decided that I would go and see Dr. Acott. You didn't take Matthew? No, of course I didn't. Thank heaven for that. What did he have to say? Well, you were right. It isn't up his street. No. Well? Well, I... I did my best to explain how things are. He wasn't very understanding. I, I think he was actually annoyed with me for not taking Matthew along so he could check his tongue and make him say, ah, look at his glands and things. I'm surprised he didn't give you a bottle of the old pink medicine. Or an instant prescription, at least. Well, I tried to let him know that I didn't want an opinion there and then, that all I was looking for was a recommendation for a specialist. What do you say to that? He gave me an opinion. <laughs> Which was? <laughs> All Matthew needs is plenty of fresh air and exercise, a cold bath in the morning, lots of good, plain, unseasoned food, salad, roughage, and his window open at night. But no specialist? No, not that. I know. Don't say it. You told me so. I wouldn't dare. Look, we're on holiday tomorrow. I think a change of scene and some fresh air will do us all good. Let's see who can see the cottage first. How long have you been here? Not long, about a quarter of an hour. Seems good. Oh, come and have a look around inside before you start on all that, love. I've got the kettle on. Oh, lovely. <laughs> something wrong with Matthew? Don't ask me. He's been as miserable as sin the whole way here. Come on, Matthew, give us a hand. We'll take that for a start. Ask Mummy where she wants it and then come back for more. And for heaven's sake, cheer up. We're on holiday. Come on, Matthew. I'll show you around. Something up. I feel like Matthew would have a long face. <laughs> Hello, you two. Is everything put away in your room now? Yes, yes Mummy. Right. That's the lot, then, is it? Should be. Can we go into the garden, Mummy? Yes, of course, darling. Where's Matthew? Oh, he's still upstairs. I'll go and ferret him out. Now, what's all this? Hello, Dad. We can't have this, you know, at the beginning of a holiday. 
you go around looking like a wet weekend, you'll spoil everybody else's enjoyment. Sorry, Dad. I don't mean to. You feel like telling me about it? It's chalky. I was afraid it might be. What she said now? She hasn't said anything. That's the trouble. She's gone. Oh? When was this? A few days ago. I told her we were going on holiday. That because of Colin and Emma and Mr and Mrs Froome being with us all the time, it might be better if she stayed away. Sounds very sensible. But she just went straight away. Well, if she's only doing what you told her, I don't see why you should complain. You could do with a rest from her. And I know Mummy and I could. But what if she never comes back? What if I've really offended her? Oh, I'm sure you haven't. I bet she's just waiting till we get back home. Then she'll start bombarding you with questions about our strange habit of migrating for two weeks every year. Do you really think so? Yes, I do. So let's have no more of this moping, do you hear? Poor old Colin's waiting for you downstairs. Why don't the two of you go off and explore for an hour or so? Go down to the river, see if there's any fishing. OK. And you don't go trespassing on anybody's boat, because this time there'll be no chocky to blame it on, will there? No. Go on, then. Off you go. down in this lane here. Yes, I see. And we found this little inn. Did the most marvellous food. And maybe you and Mary could try tomorrow night for dinner. Let's have a look. I give up. I can't do it. You used to be able to. I was going to put you up for the record. That was just a fluke. I've forgotten how I did it now. It's coming in. This is the life. No cares, no accounts to finish. No children clamoring for attention. <laughs> yes. It's nice to be on our own for a change. Mm. I hope Phil and Alan are coping all right. Of course they are. We did when it was our turn. Besides, it's easier now. Haven't you noticed? Not a single mention of either Piff or Chucky. Do you think we've lost them? That really would be a bonus, wouldn't it? Mm, bliss. Daddy, when's Mummy coming back? I'm thirsty. Can I have a drink, please? Well, that's not a bad idea, Em. Anybody else want a drink? Yes, yes please. please. Right. There's a shop over there. Well, how about coming with me? Lend a hand, Colin. Sure. I'll stay here and watch for Rob. I'll look Thanks. after Colin. Good girl. Come on then, Colin. No, don't let the line out too far. There won't be a minute. You be careful now.
put his head down, you remember? Yes. And he came up behind me and said to me, what it was. What is it? What's wrong? It's all right, Mary. It's quite all right now. What? Matthew and Polly, where They're are safe they? and sound upstairs in bed. Oh, what's happened? They fell in the river. Oh, no! I'm right. they're okay. Oh, I must go to them. Look, let's just find out. It's like Phil said. They fell in the river. I thought they were goners for sure. I haven't stopped sweating yet. How did it happen? Pure accident. We were fishing off that old jetty, the kids and I. But I'd gone with Colin to get some cool drinks. A boat broke free from its moorings and smashed into the jetty. They were both thrown into the river. They were swept away in no time. And how on earth? Who saved them? Well, Matthew did. Old Colonel Summers saw it all from his window. He thought they were done for for sure, but then he saw Matthew strike out and grab Polly. Matthew did? Yes. Well, Summers was terribly impressed. He went after them in his boat, but he reckons they were well over a mile away before he caught up with them. And Matthew was still supporting Polly. There's no doubt he saved her life. Old Summer says he's going to make sure that Matthew gets a medal for it. And quite right, too. If anyone ever deserved a medal, it was Matthew. Right, Colin? Yes, Dad. But... Matthew can't swim. I thought Chocky wasn't coming with us. So did I. But she must have been here all the time, keeping quiet. So what happened? It's hard to say, really. It was also quick. I saw the boat going to hit the jetty. Then I was in the water. I tried to swim, but I knew it was no good. And I was going to be drowned. And I started going under. Then I heard Chocky telling me not to be a fool and not to panic. And then she said, Now think of nothing, like you do with your painting. And then I was swimming. I don't know how. See, it wasn't me at all. It was Chocky. You mean, she showed you how to swim? Yes. She's the one who did it, not me. I see. So, of course, as soon as you found you could swim, you struck out for the shore. I couldn't have done that. There was Polly. She'd have drowned. That's right. You went back for Polly. That's the point. You saved her. And we're very proud of you. Thank you, Dad. It was Chucky who really did it. What's that? Another of Chucky's views? Sort of. It's where she comes from. That's her home. Time just coming up to 22 minutes past eight, and we turn from ancient heroes like John no? here to modern ones. 12-year-old Matthew Gore, who lives in Hindmere in Surrey, became a hero last week when he was on holiday with his family in Sussex. Our reporter, Dennis Buck, spoke to Matthew at his home. Matthew? Hello, Matthew. I believe you and your little sister had a narrow escape last week. Hello there. Hello, Mr Martin. Did you have a nice holiday? Yes, thank you. And how does your dad like being back at work, eh? He doesn't like it. When he came home from the office last night, he said he wished we were still at the cottage. Uh, I know just how he feels. Here, I'll tell you what. You give him nose for me. Thank you. So long, eh? <laughs> oh, that's very good. Your parents must be very proud of you. Now, the thing is, I'm told you'd never swum before. Mummy, right? you, you couldn't swim. Can I open the letters? Yes. But when you felt yourself sinking, you heard a voice telling you what to do. Well, sort of. And you think this voice must have been your guardian angel? No. That's a load of rubbish. But, but you told the local reporter... I did that, that... He said it. I didn't know he was a reporter anyway. Then you don't think it was your guardian angel who told you how to swim? I never said anything about guardian angels. It was him. All that happened was that I got into a flap and then dropped. And suddenly I found I could swim. 
but you'd never been able to before. No. That was 12-year-old Matthew Gore, who learned to swim in the instant and rescued his little sister. Time now, 25 past eight. Time for sport. Did you know anything about that? I certainly didn't. And Matthew never said anything. How did they find out? Somebody must have told them, I suppose. Old Colonel Summers, if he really is putting Matthew up for a life-saving medal, I guess... Look, there's a picture of Matthew. What? Here, let me see. That's how the BBC got onto it. Matthew didn't say anything about this, either. It's not like him to be so secretive. Not like him at all. Hi. Do you know about this? No. Matthew, we want the truth now. I didn't. Not really. You must have spoken to a reporter. Interviewed by our reporter, Matthew modestly denied any claims to heroism. Are you saying they made this up? No. But I didn't know he was a reporter. Not until... Not until what? Not until the BBC man told you about it. Oh. Yes, oh. We've just been listening to you on the radio. You can't pretend you didn't know about that, can you? No. He told me who he was when he rang up. When was this? Yesterday afternoon, while you both were out. He asked if he could speak to me. Why didn't you tell us? I didn't want to upset you. I thought you'd be afraid if I told him about Chucky. I didn't know. And anyway, I didn't think it'd be interesting enough to get broadcast. Matthew, I don't care... Well, it's too late now. The damage is done. But if there are any more would-be interviewers, you better refer them to Mummy or me before you speak to them, okay? Okay. Sorry, Dad. Yes, he's here. It's your friend, Roy Landis. I don't want him here again. All right. Hello? Yes, hello, Roy. How are you? Uh, fine, thanks, but I'm just about to dash off my train. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, I'm a bit pushed for the next couple of days. I've uh, just got back from holiday. You know how it is. Well, all right, that should be fine. Uh, I'll see you this evening, then. Six o'clock. Right, bye. Excuse me, are you Matthew Gore? Yes. Can I talk to you, Matthew? No, we are not interested in putting Matthew on display for your psychic circle. My son is not a freak. Goodbye. your mummy in? Or your brother? Are you a good girl, Polly? Do you go to Sunday school? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure you do, don't you? Excuse me, who are you? Mrs Gore. What do you want? Oh, good afternoon, Mrs Gore. I've come to talk to you about guardian angels. Oh, no, you haven't. I've had enough of guardian angels Mrs Gore, you don't have to stay much. Keep me my own salvation. Thank you, my. Polly, come with me. You're to stay down the garden with me. Oh, they were. And David, it's becoming impossible. You've got to do something. Like what? Well, I don't know. Ring up the press council or something. Darling, a few journalists and a cranky old woman aren't the end of the world. No, I agree. They are not. I have also had a couple of spiritualists, a dotty clergyman, a white witch, and a woman who's doing a thesis on the paranormal in adolescence. Oh, and David, it's not funny. And to cap it all, I have also had a telephone call from the National... from the National Schools Art Foundation. 
What did they want? You remember Matthew told us that Miss Soames had kept a picture of his. The one she made him draw looking through the art room window, yes? She's entered it for the National School's art exhibition. Well, I suppose if it was anything like the others he's done, it was pretty striking. Oh, is that all you're going to say? I think it's outrageous. I mean, how dare she do that without even consulting us? The very least she could have done was to ask us. Why on earth should she? Darling, she's only doing her job. She probably thought we'd be delighted, and so we would have been if it wasn't for this chalky business. And there's no real harm done, is there? You don't understand. It won first prize. What are we going to do when Matthew starts telling everybody that it was Chucky who did it? And how long do you think it's going to be before somebody realises that the boy who suddenly discovered he can paint is the same boy who heard a guardian angel in the river? Well, then what are we going to do? They'll think he's going mad. No, no, no. How could they possibly? You couldn't find a saner boy anywhere than Matthew. You know that. Well, I thought I did, but... Oh, David. I'm so afraid for him if they hear that he hears voices in his darling, head. And... Darling, there is nothing, nothing at all wrong with Matthew himself. He's as normal a boy as one could, ho could hope to meet. But the swimming and the painting, all those questions. I know, I know. The only way I can explain it is to say that he's sort of haunted. Haunted? Well, I wish I could think of a better word. It's a kindly sort of haunting. It doesn't mean him any harm. After all, it did save his life, and Polly's. Oh, I see you're saying it really is a guardian angel. No. Well, I suppose yes, in a way. Whatever it is, I'm convinced it comes from outside him. And Landis thinks so, too. He is an expert on mental disorders, after all. And? He's been giving our problem considerable thought. Oh, that's very kind he of him. He suggests we let Sir William Thorpe see Matthew and give us his opinion. So, William? He? Landis says he's the absolute top man. He advises some of the biggest international firms on industrial psychology. Real, practical stuff, not just theories. As well as working in St. Benedict's and running various clinics. All right. Let's see what Sir William's got to say. How do you do? I'm uh, very grateful to you for agreeing to see Matthew so quickly. That's quite all right, Mr. Gore. I'm only too pleased to do what I can. Hello, Matthew. Come and sit down. How are you? Okay. How do you do, sir? Dr. Landis has already told me about your little problem. Oh, good. Uh... Well, shall I, um... If you'd like to leave Matthew with me for an hour or so, so that we can have a little chat, Perhaps you'd come back at, shall we say, 4.30. Yes, of course. See you later. Sit down, Matthew. Make yourself at home. I see. So your friend Chalky finds it difficult to understand the varying degrees of intelligence in animals. Yes. She wanted to know why a cows on a farm near our home couldn't learn to open the gate for themselves, since they'd obviously learnt which door to go into the milking shed and everything. That's a good question. Do they have animals where she comes from? I don't know. Don't think they can have. Mm. 
That's it. Can you see the record from there? Yes, thank you. Good. I'll bet you've never seen a record like this before, have you? No. No. I didn't think you would have. Now, I want you to relax and watch the record. That's right. Just watch the record going round and round and round. That's right. Try to empty your mind. And in a moment, you may start to feel drowsy. Don't worry if you feel like going to sleep. That's quite all right. I'm going to ask you some more questions and I want you to answer them all truthfully. You must hold nothing back, nothing at all. Now, Chalky. There we are, Matthew. If you'd like to wait next door with Miss Jenkins for a moment while I have a quick word with your father. Well? I'm afraid I haven't the time to explain it all to you at the moment, Mr. Gore. I have another appointment. However, you can put your mind at rest. There's absolutely nothing for you to worry about. Good. My, uh, my wife will be pleased to hear that. Yes, I'm sure she will. You can tell her that it's just a phase, and not as uncommon as you might suppose in a boy of his age. Matthew has built up an elaborate fantasy system. That's all. Nothing to worry about, I promise you. But the, uh, the swimming, the painting, the incident with the car... Yes, yes, I'll write to you with a full report about all that in a day or two. They're all perfectly natural, I assure you. Well... Thank you again. The subconscious is an amazing thing, Mr. Gore. Amazing. Chucky. Chucky. Chucky, where are you? Chucky, where are you? Why won't you come? Why wouldn't you come? I cannot come to you anymore. Why? What have I done? I have to go away. No! You must forget me. No! Forget me. You're my friend. I cannot explain. I have to go back. Back to my own people. But that's not fair. It is not fair for me to stay. It could be dangerous for you. No, no, please, Chucky. I must go. Goodbye, Matthew. Please don't. Forget me, Please Matthew. don't leave me, Chucky. Forget. Don't go away. Forget. Please don't leave me. Chucky! Chucky! You sound happy this morning. I am. I feel as though 
huge weight has been lifted from my mind. One for you. Thank you. Thanks. Anything from Sir William? Uh, he did say it would be a day or two. Oh, yes. What's that? Something for Matthew. <laughs> Hello, darling. There's a package for you. From the Royal Swimming Society, according to the label. Yeah. Aren't you going to open it? It's all right. Here. Chalky's medal, not mine. She's the one that saved me and Polly. That's not true! Matthew! Matthew! Wasn't he with Colin? No, Colin had choir practice. He had to stay on later, otherwise... Oh, yes, of course. Now David's home, I'd better get back to my lot. Matthew will turn up soon. You'll see. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Phil. Anyway, call me if there's anything I can do. Uh, yeah, thanks, Phil. Good night. Bye. You've no idea where he might have gone? No. Oh, David. Uh, you've asked the school? Teachers, friends? Everybody I can think of. Oh, I'm so worried. Will you hear such dreadful things? Oh, yes, I know, but... I mean, I've rung all the hospitals for miles around. The police? Yes, they came round, they searched the house, the garden, they talked to Colin and Phil and the schools. Oh, David, I'm so scared. Yes, of course, darling, but there's bound to be a perfectly simple explanation. Well, like what? I keep imagining all sorts of things. Well, I can see him. It's that chalky business, isn't it? Well, I thought all that was over and done with after he saw the Thorpe. So did I. I thought that Thorpe was right. I thought that the fantasy would break up and dispel and that that would be that. <sighs> Things are never that simple. No. And Matthew's been so withdrawn since. Well, he never says anything. Not to me, anyway. And now this. Did you tell the police anything about Chucky? No, of course not. What did you tell them? Well, I said that he'd been a bit upset lately, what with all the fuss about the rescue and everything. Good. You don't think that he... No, of course I don't, and you mustn't either. Look, Chucky going away has been a shock to him. Whatever she was, he got used to having her around. He needed to adjust. If he was going to do anything silly, he'd have done it a fortnight ago, but nothing of the kind ever entered his head, I'm sure of it. I'm sure you're right. But that's what makes it all the more difficult to understand. I mean, he's not an insensitive boy. He must know how we're feeling, so why? Why? Yes, this is David Gore. Yes. Yes, uh, I see. Uh, when was this, Mr. Bollett? 
Right, thank you very much. I'll, I'll let the police know at once. Thank you. Well? That was uh, Mr. Bollard. His son's in the year above Matthew. Yes. they just seen the papers. He says he saw Matthew on Friday on the way home from school. Well? He was talking to a man a little way down from the school gates. He says Matthew got into a car with him, a Mercedes, he thinks, and they drove off. No! No! Hello, uh, this is David Gore. Could I speak to Inspector Max, please? In Surrey, the search continues for 12-year-old Matthew Gore, who has now been missing for five days. In spite of a massive hunt by police and volunteers, there is still no trace of Matthew who was abducted from near his school last Friday by a man in a dark-coloured Mercedes car. Matthew was dressed in his... Darling, we mustn't give up hope. I'll never see him again, I know it. Me, please. Yes, what is it? I'm afraid I'm lost. I can't get home because I haven't got any money. You, I've got a problem, haven't you? Now, where exactly is I? Hindmere. I'm here in Surrey. And what would your name be? Matthew. Matthew Gore. You stay right there, Matthew. PC 2974 to control. all you've done. Well, I'm afraid it wasn't very much in the end, was it? You did everything you could. Come on, Matthew. Let's get you home. I've got all your favourite things waiting at home for you for tea. Well, I've already had a soup tea here in the canteen. Oh. I expect I can manage a bit more. Well, goodbye, Mrs Gore. Well, Matthew, I hope that's the last time you ever get into a car with anyone you don't know. Well, thank you again. I wonder if I could just have a quick word with you alone, Mr Gore, before you go. Yes, of course. You go on, darling. I'll be with you in a second. Well, first of all, I can put your mind at rest. Matthew's come to no harm. No harm at all, as far as we can tell. Are you sure? Well, the police surgeon's given him a pretty thorough check over. Right as rain. Thank heaven for that. <laughs> yes. It's odd, though. He doesn't even seem to have been frightened. It's quite the most considerate kidnapping I've ever heard of. You don't know why it happened, then? Not really. But there's a couple of things you ought to know. Oh? Yes. First, he appears to have had a number of injections in both arms. Now, the doctors have no idea what was injected, but whatever it was, it doesn't seem to have left any after effects. All the same, we think you ought to keep an eye open for any delayed reactions. I see, right. Now, the second thing is even more curious. Matthew is convinced he's been in a car crash and that his leg was fractured. What? Well, there's nothing to support that except some slight abrasions on his left leg, which, according to the doctor, seemed consistent with the use of a plaster cast. But no fracture, you say? No. Matthew says it was in plaster, and that the people at the hospital gave him a new treatment which made it mend very quickly. But we've had x-rays taken, there's no sign of a break. The hospital? That's what he said. Matthew doesn't appear to realise that he was kidnapped at all. Your appetite obviously hasn't suffered any ill effects. That was lovely. Good. Well, now that you've refuelled, why don't you tell us all about it? Again? I keep having to tell everybody. Well, he hadn't told us yet. No. Well, I was coming home from school, and this car stopped. And a man got out and sort of wandered and looked up and down the road as if he was lost. Well, as I was passing him, he said, Excuse me, we're looking for Densham Road. So, of course, I told him how to get to it. He said, since I obviously knew it well, could I tell him whereabouts in Densham Road was a house called Coppins, where Mr Gore lived? I see. So you told him that was our house? Yes. Then what? That's a funny thing. Because after that I can't remember anything till I woke up in hospital. I knew it was a hospital because it was all white. I was in a white bed. The 
the walls were white and bare and terribly clean. It was a nurse. <laughs> she was terribly clean too. I discovered I couldn't move my leg. And the nurse said not to try because I'd been in a car accident. It had been broken. I said I couldn't remember anything about an accident. And she said that was quite normal. And lots of people don't because of the ammo amnesia. She asked if my leg hurt. When I said no, she said, that was good. It's because they'd been injected with a new drug that stopped the pain. Not to worry because they were using another new drug, which heals bones very quickly, especially young bones like mine. The only bad thing was I had to keep on having injections. There were two or three doctors who came. Then I felt tired and went to sleep. That was after you had the cocoa? Yes. When I woke up, it was very odd, because I was in a different car, all by myself, in daylight. And when I got out, I discovered I was in Birmingham. So I thought the best thing to do would be to find a policeman. And the rest we know. Yes, they drove me all the way from Birmingham to Hindmere in a police car. <laughs> it was super. You are lucky, Matthew. That's almost worth being kidnapped for. Kidnapped? Was I kidnapped, Dad? Well, it looks very much like it, yes. We've had half the country searching for you for the past week. But they weren't a bit like kidnappers. They made me better. Well, don't you worry about that now. You must be worn out after such a long day. Why don't you and Polly go up and get ready for bed? All right. Will you come up? In a minute, darling. Hello. Is Mummy asleep? Ages ago, and so should you be. I know. It's chalky. Okay. What about chalky? She's come back. She wants to talk to you. She's got some things she wants to tell you. Me? What sort of things? I don't really know. She wants to tell you herself. Like she talks to you, you mean? No. She says that only works with some people. Oh, I see, and I'm not one of them. <laughs> no. But she says it would take far too long for her to tell me and for me to pass it on to you. So she's going to try and do it through me. <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh, it's all right. Chucky's pretty sure she can do it, OK? All right, then, well, if this is going to take some time, don't you think we'd be better off in bed? You'd be much more comfortable. Mm. Yes. Yes, Chucky thinks that's a good idea. I am going to think of nothing. Listen, Matthew. Matthew? It is Chucky speaking. I have to explain some things to you. It is not easy because I can only use Matthew's words, vocabulary. Hi. Very well, I'll do my best to follow you. I shall not come back again after this. You will be glad to know. What are you, Chucky? I am an explorer. No. Scout. I mean, teacher. Where are you from? Far away. Many... I do not know how far. I was sent here to find out what kind of planet this is. Sent? How? Only my mind is here. Because mind has no mass. It takes no time to travel. So scouts are sent out in this way. You mean there are more of you? Not here, no. Only when a scout makes a... a 
favorable report on a planet are others sent to check. They may send a ship off of colonists. I see. And when should we expect a ship here? This planet is no use to us. Few planets are. But if this planet is no use to you, then why did you stay? Because you have intelligent life, the rarest thing in all creation. It is a holy thing to be fostered and nurtured. That is why I have stayed here. Chucky. Why can't you speak to me direct? It is very difficult to explain. Perhaps, now that you have accepted my existence, I will try. But you must be sure to unblock your mind. I'll do my best. field created through Matthew I have to teach to help you find a source of infinite power that will clear the way for your planet's future development what is this source of infinite power a form of cosmic radiation my mission is to guide you towards its discovery and to teach you how to harness it. Through Matthew. That was my plan. But why? Why did you choose him out of all the thousands of millions of people on Earth? The subject must have the kind of mind which can communicate with us, and this is not common. It must also be a young mind capable of development in the way we need. Matthew is one of the few people who fulfills all these requirements. What were you planning to do with him? I would have interested him in physics and gradually developed his understanding and ability until he succeeded in discovering and demonstrating the use of cosmic power. He would have become the most famous man in your world. Greater than your Newton or Einstein. Chucky, if you were sent to find someone like Matthew, why are you going away now that you have found him? Because I made too many mistakes. I should not have interfered with anything. I should merely have observed. You mean... You should have let Matthew and Polly drown in the river. That would have been the proper way, but I failed. Thank heaven. Yes, but because of my failure, I have created other dangers for Matthew. That is why I have to go. I don't understand. I told Matthew too much, too soon. He told lies, and then Thor, Thor hypnotized Matthew. When he heard what Matthew knew already and realized it was genuine, he became very excited. He is a greedy man, greedy both for money and for power. He saw a way of obtaining both, and that is why Matthew was kidnapped. Hope. And his friends, they injected him with drugs to make him talk. And when they had to accept the fact that I had left him, they decided to let him go and keep an eye on him for any sign that I had returned. But you won't come back? No. It would not be safe. But surely, if he has such a valuable potential... Valuable or dangerous? What would it 
be worth to your powerful energy interest to learn of a new source of energy which could destroy them? How much would a little boy's life count in removing that danger? I hadn't thought of that. As long as Matthew does not become involved in science, he will be safe. You must encourage him to take more interest in art. Yes. Yes, I understand. What will you do now? Will you go back to your own world? No. I still have my work to do here. I shall have to do it differently, giving a little to each of many men and women. It will take a long time. Probably it will not happen in your lifetime, but it will come. It will come. Now, I must go. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chucky, and thank you. That's very good. Hello, Dad. Yes, I'm quite pleased with it. And all your own work this time? Yes. Chucky was teaching me how to see things for a little while. Before she... Yes. She told me she had to go. She explained why properly this time. It's pretty hard the way she did it before. It's going to be a bit dull without her. She made me notice things. Can't you go on noticing things? The world's quite an interesting place. Oh, yes. Only it's kind of lonely. Yeah. Here. Go on, take it. Open it. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. 